Gracie Schwartzwald. I'm here with Erkan Mette, and we're going to go over um, uh, a technique tonight um, geared her way to um, enter into the clinch and something that I like to do from the clinch that I think works well for uh, self-defense, uh, sort of police or military applications, as well as just sport grappling. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is basically one of the ways to get to the clinch. Okay, so the first thing I don't want to do is stand kind of in the danger zone, to quote Archer, meaning right here where we're in our fight zone. Okay, uh, when we're thinking self-defense, we can't think, um, you know, taking a huge chance to knock him out, but also taking a huge chance to myself get knocked out because there's no rep. So I stand here, one, I have so many more things that I can't control. He can kick, he can take me down pretty quickly. Um, I have to do with all kinds of strikes here. Okay, so what I want is to have a greater distance between us if possible. Okay, so I'm either going to be very far range. By far range, I mean at least two arm lengths, meaning the lead arm, not the rear arm. Okay, the lead arm. I don't want to be closer because now if he tries to kick me, I'm out of range. He tries to hit me, I'm out of range for him to take me down. He's got to come a pretty far away. The other thing that does mean also is that he actually has to close the distance. Okay, meaning he has to come forward, which really works to my advantage. So because if I'm here and I try to take him down, he can back away pretty quickly. But if as he's coming forward, it's hard for him to change directions and stop me getting the clinch. So I want to actually encourage him to come forward. So our, this, our safe distances are either very far away, where I don't have to deal with so many attacks, or at least I have much more time, or we're in close, where I can smother the attacks, I can predict the attacks, he tries to punch, I can feel what he's doing. But right here, I don't really want to stay here if possible. Okay? So depending on the threat level, I'll either move out, move in, also depending on what you have to do. So the other advantage here, again, is if we're in this situation, especially if he's really trying to knock me out, he's not going to be stepping in throwing a jab or a tee or anything like this out on the street. He's going to be coming with a big hard right. And notice how he's swinging. It's very awkward for a guy, especially an untrained guy, to step in and kind of just throw this straight right. Okay? Most often they're going to come in with the big knockout punch. Okay, so when he comes, the only way I'm going to get knocked out is to stand right here. Okay, if I back away, out of range, I'm good. Don't make this mistake of just trying to block. He's generating way too much force for that. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to close the distance and kind of jam his attack. So when he steps in, I want to step in at the same time. Okay, uh, this does two things. It moves me out of where the striking area that he was aiming for. Okay, now when I go, I can go... When he comes with the punch, I can go under the arm, over the arm, or inside the arm. Okay, so in this situation, we're going to go over the arm. So the focus we're going to do is, my hands are, of course, up. I'm going to comb my hair straight back and cup the back of my head with my hand. My elbow is tight right in front of my nose, so I'm not across, but I'm not open like this. In boxing, you can maybe get away with this because you have a big glove. But right here, I need to close that space off entirely. What I don't do with this hand is drop my hand. I keep my hand up so I'm protected on both sides of my head. So very slowly what it's going to look like is when I step in, I'm going to step in all the way. Okay? I'm not bringing it super high, just over his arm. Because okay? as soon as it goes a little bit high, worst case, it'll slide right over. Okay? So when we step in, I'm right here, again this other hand is up. What I don't do is then just drop my arm and try to wrap his arm. Because right now, he's going to be able to pull his arm right out, and now we're back into that situation. The goal of the clinch is what? To control. Right, and when we get a clinch, what is our main focus? To stay in the clinch. Right, to stay in the clinch. So I don't want to kind of come in with a bad clinch, he breaks out and striking again. So when we come in, I step, and what I want to do is drop my elbow down, controlling his arm. As I do, I'm actually putting my weight into it a little bit. As you'll see in this open the space up. And then my hand, C clamps right behind his tricep. My other arm, my armpit's closing on his upper arm at his wrist. So we're here, we come in, and drop and catch. Now he tries to pull his arm out, it's here. The other reason I don't want to go here, it's fine if I'm going to stay on this side to have a wizard. But if I stay here, one, he can get an underhook with his hand, and now we're kind of fighting in. And certainly, if I go to this side, there's just no way I'm going to be able to keep that arm like this, pull your arm out. Yeah. So we're going to step to the other side. So let's do it from this side for a second. So we're here, we're checking our range. He comes in, our hand's already up, I step in, 
leaning down. You'll see that it'll open or it'll lift this shoulder up. My hand that was here drops, comes under. Now what I need to do is walk over to this side. The way I do this is I up, turn my hand out, lifting this elbow, and bring myself to this side. I've got this arm tight, trapped tight, elbow tight, so pull your arm up. Even just that will hold here. My other hand travels to the hip now. My head is directly in his uh, neck or in his face, looking forward, not this way. Because if he wants to turn back into me now, he can't. Okay, so from here, he steps in, I cover, drop, arm underneath. I turn my hand to lift my elbow, shuck him to the side, and I step to the side. Now, this is our modified seat belt position. It's very important. He's kind of got a headlock, but it's not that bad because he can't lock his head with hands. This would be bad. Here, I'm controlling the arm he's trying to hit me with. What I don't want is my head up, where he frames in front of my neck and pushes off. I don't want my hips back because he pulls his hips away. I can't hold on to him. I want my hips glued, my hand holding his waist tight to me, my posture good. Right here. The other thing is I don't want to be behind him. He pushes his hips back. He's going to start breaking me down and throwing me. Okay. So we're here. I step in, cover, drop, lift, step. Hips are in tight. Again, not here. I can't emphasize this enough. I've got good posture. I'm dominating the posture. My head is here, so he tries to do an inside trip. No, inside. There you go. I'm blocking with the head, so I don't want my head away. So from here, this is one of our major clinch positions. We have a number of options. Okay. I have my body fold, leg hook, hip throw, single leg, any number of things. If you're Ericon, Uchimara. Okay. But we're going to go with one I like a lot, okay. especially kind of, again, for um, sort of police applications. And this is if uh, he's got me bent just a little bit, but it'll work if I'm upright too. So what I'm going to do is by keeping this arm, my back arm, I'm going to turn my hand and use my shoulder and my elbow to bump him forward. So as I bump him forward, I'm going to shrug my shoulders and I'm going to drop my level and come out. Now notice as I did that, I'm going to go really slowly. My hand slides down to his wrist and catches and I pull him right back. This hand now controls the upper arm and I switch my hip, uh, position to this side of his hip. So now if I had a weapon, he doesn't have access to it. If he has a weapon, he's gonna have very difficult access to it. If he's trying to elbow me, he can't elbow me, elbow me with the other arm, he can't here. So I've got good positions here. He tries to turn into me, he can't turn right, turn left, he can't go either way. And I'm keeping him tight and trying to keep his posture broken down a little bit. So let's do from this side real quickly. So he's here, he comes in, you get in, I come in, I control, I control, when I feel I have a chance, I bump, I come here. Now we have a number of takedowns. Again, I'm trying to posture him down, very simplest one. I'm going to take the bottom of my foot and check low on his foot, low on his ankle. At the same time, I'm just going to drag him to the side. So I'm here in the circle, to pull him, pull him, check him down. Very simple takedown. So from this side. Got him here. I'm just going to start to pull, take a step. As I pull, I just check the foot, put him down. Okay. The other option from that position, I get here. Maybe he's opened his base kind of wide. It's a little harder. I can just drop my level. I have a couple options. I can just bring my leg in, or from the outside, just do a leg hook. Just pull him down, take him here, or and put enough weight here, just put him down this way. Okay, so we have a couple opportunities. So one last time, we're here. He steps in, I cover, drop, lift, come in, you'll probably fight here for a bit. When you feel the moment, I lower my level. Again, don't, don't bend over. I want to squat, so I have good control. And that's a punch block into a control position. And, uh, uh, it's a position I really like for a variety of purposes.